Okay, so it's Thursday, July 15th. I'm in the studio having a very chill day and all of a sudden I see this thing from Valve. They announce the Steam Deck. It, it, there's just so much stuff to talk about. So this is probably one of the coolest devices I've seen this year. It is a portable gaming console thing and it's awesome. Like, it's just awesome. So if you look at the hardware specs, this is like the first thing that jumps out at me, right? For $399 at the base price, you're getting a seven inch 1280 by 800 touchscreen, which I think is actually the perfect resolution for this kind of device. Like I've never done a review on this thing, but this is the one X player. There's a lot of devices out there that try to do this whole handheld gaming console thing. And a lot of companies go for high resolution screens, right? Because it looks better on spec pages. It looks, it looks cooler on paper, but in terms of actual playability, high resolution screens suck when they're super small because you're just killing battery life. This thing has, if you're playing any decent game, it's like a 30 minute battery life realistically, right? So low res screen on a handheld device like the Switch is perfect. Uh, 16 gigs of really fast RAM. Like we're talking 5.5 gigahertz, dual channel, LPDDR5. This stuff is top of the line RAM. It's fast and it's exactly what this system needs. It's running an AMD APU and that stuff loves fast memory. If you look at the storage, we're looking at 64 gigs of EMMC storage at the base model. It's not like super fast stuff, but it's usable. My concern though is a lot of Steam games, especially some of like the AAA titles, they are huge. Like actually, I think they'll pop over 64 gigs if you have a have a big enough game. And I know it's the base model. Obviously you can go up to like 512 of faster stuff, but it's it's a little tight. You do have micro SD, but it's one of those things where I'm wondering if you have a game that's say, I don't know, like 70 gigs, right? Let's say you have a big ass game 70 gigs, like does it know how to split it? Can it store half of it on the internal storage and then put a chunk of it onto the external? Like that's that's interesting. But 64 gigs for 399, like that's the thing that makes this whole thing work. $399 US for a portable gaming computer. This stuff is powerful. This isn't like, you know, RTX 3090 powerful, but RDNA 2, 1.6 teraflops on a seven inch screen, right? 1280 by 800p. It's Plenty. This is going to be a very viable system for the vast majority of games out there. And the best part is it's a it's a full-fledged PC. You can plug it up to like a monitor, keyboard, mouse, all the regular PC gaming peripherals, you can plug it right up to it. And then now you have a four hundred dollar gaming PC. It's it's crazy. Like I look at this and the, the, the first thing that comes to mind is like, why? Like why would they do this? This does not make in terms of the hardware sales, right? This does not make a lot of money for Valve. This is not a high profit item. I wouldn't be surprised if that base model for three ninety nine, if it if it's like a if it's like a loss product, like a, you know, like how consoles are sold at a loss so that the companies can sell games. I would not be surprised if that base model is just like that. You, you're they're losing money on every one of them that they sell in terms of the hardware, and they make it up in software. Now, speaking of software, it's kind of surprising how open this platform seems to be. It's running a Linux-based Steam OS 3, but you can install whatever you want on it. So you can install Windows on it, you can install competing gaming services, like you can install Origin or Epic Games, whatever you want. It's a gaming PC. As long as it runs on a regular gaming PC, you can install it on this. It's pretty nuts. You can install like Discord, homebrewed stuff like emulation. You can do whatever you want. It's crazy. For this kind of price, I think that's that's super impressive. The weight at 670 grams, that's heavy. Like a switch is 300 grams, I think a little bit less than 300 grams. 670 is pretty chunky. It's not like super chungus. This is super chungus. Like this is not a comfortable device to use, but looking at that controller, you see how they've sculpted the back of it so that the curves of the device kind of go with the curves of a natural grip. Something like that makes a big difference in the ergonomics and just comfort of a device, especially if it's thick, right? You're holding it for like an hour. Something like this, chunk is here. It's got some curvatures, but you hold on to this for like 20 minutes, your hands feels tired. And maybe it's because it's heavy, but I actually think that the curvature makes a big difference. Like you gotta grip it tight so it doesn't slip out of your hands. That thing, you can just hold it, right? It looks like it just naturally fits in your hand. 670 grams though. It's not super light, but I think in terms of comfort, I think a lot of concerns are like, oh, you know, that's a heavy device, it's a thick device, but I think the curvature makes a big, big difference in overall usability. Now the controls themselves, I'm looking at this thing and the, the first reaction on the controls is like, those are weirdly positioned. Like they're so high up, right? That's just not the traditional spot where you'd put like a D-pad or anything. And it's just, they're up at the top. 
That's something you got to play with. But those touch capacitive sensor things, I love them. So on the Steam controller, they had that tech a couple years ago and I loved it, man. So it's nice to see them put it on the Steam Deck. You can seemingly also use it as a trackpad. So if you have the operating system or certain games that can make use of a tracking cursor, like just a regular capacitive touchpad, that's kind of cool. Uh, I will say, if I'm just being honest, that the vast majority of games that I play on Steam and the, the, the games that are in my Steam library, they'd all be better played with a mouse and keyboard, which is cool, right? Because you can plug it up and just use it like a regular thing. But this is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, battery life. So looking at a 40 watt hour battery, uh, considering the size of that device, I don't know if they could have made it any bigger. Like the bigger the battery, the bigger and chonkier the device is, right? 40 watt hours. I think this thing's like 60 watt hours, but this was, this is a completely different kind of system. This thing chewed through batteries. 40 watt hours on the APU is a 15 watt, like at the top end. So it's not super battery draining, not a super high resolution screen. I think it's good. So they're quoting two to eight hours, which is a pretty big spread. But there's a line in the IGN video where they're saying if you're playing Portal 2 at max settings, you'll get about four hours of battery life. But if you limit it to 30 frames per second, you get six hour battery life. So it's a decent battery life. I mean, imagine playing Cyberpunk on the system, it's just gonna chew through it. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's not bad. Now my overall take on this is like, it, I can't, I still at this point have not wrapped around the why. Because if you think about Valve, they're a company that, like, they're good at making money. They're really good at making money. And for them to bring this out, right, it's obviously not the hardware. That's not the play here, right? That The hardware is like the, the stepping stone to get somewhere. And they do they really need this? Like, this is a huge endeavor. They're going to sell a lot of these. And I'm just imagining, who are they pulling? What's the, what's the user base that they're pulling that they would not be able to capture with just through regular PC gaming? Right? Why do they need this portable console thing? It's just so weird to me. I think they'll be able to pull a chunk of the Nintendo Switch players, right? Like the people that are buying that thing instead. Like now you got this. This is pretty appealing. But yeah, what do you think? Is this thing awesome? Like, like yeah, man. I think this is cool. Oh, accessories. So even the base model includes a carrying case, a pretty nice looking one, and the USB-C charger. So there you have it. Steam Deck from Valve. It's a pretty nice looking package for 399 bucks. Pre-order start tomorrow. I'm totally gonna pick one up. And I imagine these things are gonna sell out very quickly. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time. <laughs>